Hi, welcome to Minutes with Mickey. A time for us to wonder about the second half of the story concerning Naaman and Gehazi. It is a healing of Naaman that we find in 2 Kings chapter 5. We realized from the first the story previously that Naaman was cured because he finally got it right and he went and bathed into the Jordan River. And it tells us at the very beginning of this particular section of the story in um, this verse 15 that Naaman and all his attendants went back before the prophet of God and Naaman said these words. And I love this. I love the way this is said. It says, Now I know there is no God in all the world except in Israel. No God in all the world except in Israel. And so he wants then to give um, Elisha all the gifts that he had been given to give to the king of Israel. And Elisha won't accept those gifts. But then Naaman says, please then let me take um, two full bags on the back of a mule of dirt from this land. Um, and he says, and I will never again make burnt offerings and sacrifices to any God but the Lord. But may the Lord forgive your servant of this one thing. When my master, and th I find this really interesting because he's asking for permission to bow down before another God. And, you know, Elisha says, sure, don't worry about it. And I think the way it's written in the text here is what's important about for us to see. And here is what it says. When my aunt master enters the temple of Rimmon to bow down, and he is leaning on my arm, and I bow down there also, when I bow down in that temple, may the Lord forgive your servant for this. And I think for me, that was what I was always wondering about. Why is it that God would tell Elisha to let... Um, this man off the hook for bowing down and maybe it was because he was just doing his job not because it was where his heart was and God is always interested in where our heart is um, even when the outward appearance may not be the same so I just find that really interesting and so Elisha tells him to go in peace now comes the interesting part of the story and that is Gehazi I have been wondering about Gehazi all along because Gehazi was the one who um, was questioning things, made, made the idea that the um, on his own that the Shunammite woman might want a baby, want a child, and we don't know where that comes from. And um, we see that he takes the the uh, staff um, to the Shunammite woman's son's uh, room and lays it on top of the son, and nothing happens. There's no healing until Elisha shows up, and I think that. Um, Elisha, I wonder, this is my wonder, Elisha's trying very hard to help Gehazi learn what needs to be done in order to be the servant of a prophet and to come alongside and understand what God is all about. And Gehazi, wow, in our last story we talked about getting it wrong. Boy, does Gehazi get this wrong. Gehazi, in his own selfishness, he decides that the Syrian um, uh, commander is getting off too easy. And so he goes back and he then accepts the gifts. And isn't it interesting that he obviously knows that this is wrong because when, after he accepts the gifts and takes them to his own home, he goes back to um, Elisha's house and Elisha corners him. He says, where were you? And, and Gehazi lied. And isn't it fascinating? How is it that the prophet of God would say, he says, I was there with you. I saw. In the spirit of the Lord, this is where the power is, is that God saw and chose to show Elisha what Gehazi had done. And then the, the curse of the leprosy gets on Gehazi. Carrying it from the story, from um, the very beginning part of the story about getting it wrong, Gehazi gets it wrong. And he seems to have gotten it wrong a lot. And this is a very, very strong judgment against him because now that he has leprosy, this pretty much bans him from a lot of things. So what happened to Gehazi? Do we know anything else that happens after this? Um, I'm wondering about what Elisha does then about finding someone else to serve him. Um, was Elisha meant to give Gehazi as much responsibility as he did? I don't know. These are questions that I have, but I wonder about one major thing. Lord, please don't let me get it wrong. Let me be the kind of person that is not after the prize, the goodies, the wealth, um, what I think should be fair, but to follow the word of the Lord and not my own leanings. I think there's a lesson here for all of us. Have a great week.